Hello, Desert Bearhawk fans. Back in the shop. All right, so I've been gone for two weeks, and I've gotten a couple of uh, messages about no videos. What are you doing? So, um, getting back in the swing of things, I've got a, had a, several distractions to think about, uh, namely landing light location, pitot tube location. I've been... Um, I've been talking with the guys online. I was thinking maybe I would put that landing light right here, which is uh, ribs um, nine. This is rib nine, eight and nine nose ribs. And the reason I'm thinking that is because the flanges go opposite directions, but ooh, that didn't sit well with the guy. So then I was thinking about way out here at the tip between uh, not the very nose rib and the second, so this is 23 but between 22 and 23 right here I'd have to build a mount for it to go in there and I haven't decided that that's what I'm gonna do yet Wow, that rib is really tweaked look at that oh anyways um, so I'm still kind of noodling on that uh, one person a friend of mine suggested a retractable landing light in the wing and initially I discounted that because of weight but the more I'm thinking about it the more I may like that idea. Um, some of my radio control background and the use of jack screws and servos might come into play. So um, I'm gonna think more about that. That might just be something that uh, we can accomplish pretty easily. So that's on my mind. And uh, I think I've ultimately decided to mount the pitot tube um, right here, which is the next bay outboard of the attach fitting. And I'm going to mount it inside this bay in this area here. I'm actually going to mount the pitot tube to a removable panel. So I'll have the whole wing skinned and everything done. Then I'll put a panel in this bay. Then I'll put structure in the panel and I'll mount my pitot tube mount right in the panel. Because if I mount my pitot tube, say right here in between these two nose ribs, I'm still going to need to put a panel right here to service it. I take the panel out and I stick my hand up through the hole here. Well, the way I figure it is, if I got to remove this panel to service it, or I got to have a panel anyway, why not just put the pitot tube in the panel, unscrew the panel, and drop the whole thing out in my hand, disconnect the wires, disconnect the uh, the little air lines, and bing, bang, boom, I've got it. I can service it. I can do whatever I want. So I think that's what I'm going to do there. Um, since I got back, the last thing I showed you was these false spars. They go um, in the fuel tank bay, so that's this big open hole right here, and you can see the other one on the other side, the big open hole. And the fuel cell sits inside this big hole here, and uh, you have to fit these false spars. Well, I have fitted them. I have fit them. Fitted them. Yeah. I have fit them. Um, you can see that I've got the, um, we can't see the angle, but there's the Coleco's holding the angle in there. And we're drilled, and we're drilled to this rib. This, uh, this little short rib here, and we're drilled to this one right here. But what we aren't, or what we haven't done, is we haven't drilled the base or the root of it. And the reason is, is because when I was making these ribs a year ago, I drilled those holes right there, you can see them, to put these stringers in. See, there's a stringer there, or a stiffener rather. Well, I'm, you know, I'm merrily drilling along while I drilled those holes right there to put this stiffener in only then realizing that I needed to put that mechanism in there which kind of screwed me up so we talked about the fix where I shimmed this whole thing up with a quarter inch bar you can see the bar right there it shimmed up a quarter inch so I could pick up the holes everything works groovy well now I'm on the other side of the rib on this side and I've got those holes that just happened to fall in right where this false spar goes. So I'm gonna to have to engineer a solution for that. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove an eighth off the end of this false spar to clear the uh, manufactured heads on these rivets and then um, manufacture a bracket that'll actually go over those rivet heads and pick this piece up. I haven't figured that out yet. But that's, uh, that's basically what my next challenge is. So I'm gonna take these uh, false spars to work tomorrow and uh, put them on the big belt sander, belt disc sander, and take an eighth inch off this end. I could do it a lot easier than cutting them with a shear or a bandsaw, just sand it off of there, brute force, get rid of it. And it's the same thing on the other side. I mean, when I make a mistake, at least I make them accurately across both wings. 
So you can see the other side's drilled in place too. So both wings are back to the same spot again. And uh, hopefully by, by Wednesday night, I'll have an update for you where I've got a, a bracket in here that's picking up this and picking up a rivet line on, on this uh, number two rib. And we'll have our solution and then we can start moving forward again. Got to put in my doublers and my nut plates for my tank hold down straps. I'm going to pick up these holes. You can see that hole right there doesn't have a rivet in it. That's going to pick up that hole and it's going to pick up that hole. And there's a third one down here. And I got to put some more holes in here for some other stuff. And lots to think about, lots to do, but we're moving along. So that's the update. Um, false spars are just about in place. Well, they pretty much are in place, but I got to get this root situation handled. And then this whole section down here, this whole root section is going to be tied in together. And it's already really super, getting really super stiff and strong. You can't hardly move anything anymore. So we're getting there. All right, that's the update. Uh, glad to be back. Sorry to keep you waiting. And we'll talk to you from in the shop.